What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 15.2 Beta 4 to registered developers about two weeks after the release of Beta 3. And as usual, public beta testers, you guys should be seeing this update very soon as well. So in addition to this iOS release, we also got iPadOS 15.2 Beta 4, tvOS 15.2 Beta 4, watchOS 8.3 Beta 4, HomePod OS 15.2 Beta 4, and the other day we also got macOS Monterey 12.1 Beta 4. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS and iPadOS and what's new in the software, along with when to expect the final release. So let's go ahead and take a look at the size of this update and then move on to what's new. So you can see here it came in at 679 megabytes on my iPhone 13 Pro Max coming from Beta 3. Of course that size will vary depending on your device and the version you're coming from, but that's what it was from beta three. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for this fourth beta, settings general about 15.2. We can see the new build number here is 19C5050B. So once again, we have back-to-back Bs at the end of the build number. So that indicates that again, we're really close to a final release, but it's still not in a build. So we'll talk about what that might mean near the end of this video when we talk about what is next. And if we scroll down to the modem firmware, you could see that is 1.32.05. So if you're having issues with connectivity, these modem firmware updates could help out with that. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 15.2 beta four? And the first thing is easily the most controversial and the number one bug that people have been talking about throughout the iOS 15.2 betas, and that is the auto brightness bug. So this was also impacting some people on 15.1 and 15.1.1. So it appears to be fixed finally here in this fourth beta. So now if you go ahead and toggle on your auto brightness, so if we go to our accessibility here, display and text size, auto brightness, if you turn that on, you can see it adjusts automatically right away. So this has been solved here in beta four. Again, I didn't notice this right away, but after using the phone for a while, I noticed that the auto brightness would be way off, especially when I would go from you know outside to inside or vice versa, and I would go through different you know, stages, different environments, and it would just really be off. So that has been fixed now. So I think a lot of people are gonna be happy about that. Now also we should be seeing some Safari improvements in this update as well. So just searching around Safari seemed to be a little bit faster and just going into bookmarks and things like that. Also there was a very minor bug that it didn't really impact a lot of people, but some people had an issue where if they would search for something and they would shake their phone to undo it, it would just fully crash Safari. So that appears to also be fixed here in beta four. It now just shows the undo typing prompt right here where you can undo your typing. And it also seems like we have some improvements to the macro toggle. So if you have the Pro or Pro Max, the iPhone 13 Pro or Pro Max, of course we have this new macro toggle down here at the bottom. So if I put you know, an object close, you can see the little macro icon down there in the bottom left hand corner that is new in iOS 15.2. But in beta four, it seems to be improved a little bit when you activate it. So it goes away a little bit quicker as well. It doesn't linger around as long, but when you activate it, it seems to be less of, you know, an intrusive kind of transition. It's a lot more fluent now when it actually switches that macro mode on. So you can see there a lot less of an animation that was previously. And then along with that macro toggle, we also had some changes. This was in beta three when we had some changes to the verbiage as well. So you can see in here, if we go down to the bottom, it now says macro control instead of auto macro. So nothing has been changed here in this fourth beta, but I did just want to point it out in case you guys had not seen it, or if you just got an iPhone 13 pro or pro max. So a lot less confusing with those named macro control instead of auto macro. So I'm a fan of that and I hope it does not revert back. And then also inside of the find my application, if you guys remember, in beta two, there were two options here. There was identify found item and another option. I can't think of what it was off the top of my head, but in beta three, it reverted back to just going back to one item, which was the identify found item. And that's the same here in beta four. So it seems like Apple was just maybe testing something in beta two, but now it just seems like it's back to normal with identify found item being there instead. I did also want to point out that some people were having issues when they connected their AirPods 3 specifically to their iOS 15.2 device. It would show some weird placeholder text on the prompt that would pop up when they first connect their AirPods. And that seems to be fixed as well, although I've never had that issue, so I cannot confirm that. So if you guys had that issue and it's been resolved, let me know in a comment down below. And that's pretty much everything that's new in beta four. So really not too much. This was yet 
another bug fix update. We do have a B at the end of the build number, which does indicate we are close, but really no major features added here in this fourth beta. We may see some in the RC or the final, but beta four, just another bug fix update which the main one is auto brightness. So that was a big one that was fixed. Now we do still have some things in the release notes. If you take a look at the release notes here, you will see that we still have the issue with streaming music. So this is a core media issue. Streaming in the music app could result in higher CPU usage, causing faster battery drain in some scenarios. So I told you guys before that it has impacted me and I don't know if it's gonna be impacting me less. You know, my battery may drain less here on beta four. I'm not too sure. I will have to try this out and let you guys know in my follow-up video if this is still you know pretty bad on the battery or not so i wouldn't assume much has changed but i will try it out and report back to you guys but as far as anything else in the release notes we do have one minor swift ui resolved bug but that was the only resolved bug here in beta 4 really minuscule release notes here and the developer portal for beta 4. now as far as the storage bug goes some people were having issues on previous betas where it would show the wrong storage amount right here and basically calculate your storage wrong a lot of people had the issue with photos specifically now i've never had this issue so i cannot tell you if it's been fixed or not but if you did have it and you updated let me know in a comment down below if your storage bug has been addressed but one bug i was having on previous betas that seems to have been fixed i think in beta 3 and it has not come back yet in beta 4 is the notification bug where my notifications would overlap or sometimes there would be a big gap between them so i still have this bug on ios 15.1 and 15.1.1 so hopefully 15.2 when i update on those devices it will go away but you can see here my notifications look just fine nothing is overlapping there's no big gap or anything between them so that's good to see here on this fourth beta now as far as performance goes performance is pretty good here on beta 4 I can't tell a difference from beta 3 and I feel like a broken record saying that but you know it's the truth I don't really notice anything different and it's hard to notice the difference you know really after a first beta and a final beta pretty much everything in between is always very very minor so it's usually when you go from one major version to the next where you see big performance improvements not really from beta to beta Beta. it's pretty rare to see that but nonetheless I did run a Geekbench test and you can see here I scored a 1747 on the single core and a 4815 on the multi-core so pretty solid results there it was better than beta 3 in the single core slightly lower in the multi-core but they both feel I mean honestly pretty much identical to me and as far as battery life goes battery life is about the same story so you know the battery drain bug with music is still there so you may see some minor battery drain it's never anything too bad at least in my experience Experience. you know I do notice it which some people think is bad but that we're on a beta you know you expect bugs you expect to have worse battery on a beta so it wasn't really a big deal to me it still isn't a big deal and again I will test that out more to see if it drains battery more or less now in this fourth beta but aside from that battery life is just fine for me it's about the same as iOS 15.1 and 15.1.1 if it weren't for that music streaming bug all right so now what's next for Apple and you can see here the spotlight search seems to be getting a little better I did have major issues issues with it on previous betas but you can see I can search for calendar and it shows up just fine I still have issues when I search for photos whatever reason so if I search for photos you can see it doesn't show up so still some minor issues there but nothing too major so anyways let's talk about the release date for the next beta and of course the final as well so today is December 2nd I cannot believe it's December already but next week is going to be the week of the 6th which was my original prediction after the first beta when I thought the final could be released the week of the 6th now that is still possible but I do think we're going to see an RC build next week now there is the possibility of it being beta 5 but you know we're kind of running out of time here with the holidays coming up and everything so there's a possibility of beta 5 next week but I'm leaning towards it being the RC build next week the week of the 6th and then the final on the week of the 13th so of course we could be on the week of the 20th for the final release of 15.2 but that's kind of pushing it I think that's the very latest possible I think it's more likely to come on the week of the 13th and that is the public release for everybody and then after that gets released Apple is likely going to take a break until the beginning of January most likely the first week of January January 3rd right there until they release anything else so really looking forward to that especially if you had the auto brightness bug on 15.1 or 15.1.1 that will be fixed for most people and I think a lot of people will be excited about that but 
Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Of course, Apple is always very unpredictable, so anything could happen. We could see a final tomorrow on a Friday, for all we know. Apple is just really that unpredictable, especially at this time of the year. But anyways, guys, there you have it. That is iOS 15.2 beta 4 let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and if it fixed any of your issues let me know down there in those comments as well but if you guys enjoyed this video i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up and of course make sure to subscribe for a lot more ios 15 beta coverage but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon